Questions podcast. Today's episode, we're going to be spotlighting a um, Christian organization or company that I'm a huge fan of. If you've spent any time on gotquestions.org, you've surely seen some of the links we have to to Faith Life or um, Logos Bible Software, where they're most known by. And to me, Logos is a tremendous tool for helping people study the Bible better, have more access to resources than really anyone in the history of the planet has ever had before. So on today's episode, I have Scott Lindsay. He is the executive director of Faith Life. So Scott, um, welcome to the show. Good to be here. So tell me just briefly, um, what is your role at Faith Life? Well, I'm the frequent flyer mile king of logos. Um, travel quite a bit, obviously, the last couple of years. Uh, with COVID, it's not been as bad, but it's definitely starting to pick up again. Um, my, I would say my primary role is building key relationships with key ministries, uh, not only equipping key ministries to, uh, to, for the work of the ministry, helping them study, uh, helping them prepare messages, uh, but I also speak at conferences. So actually tomorrow morning, uh, I head to Kansas City. Uh, to hopefully get a uh, a bunch of married couples excited about studying the Bible together. Wow. So uh, a marriage conference, I'm guessing. That sounds like a lot of fun. So um, so for our listeners who may not be familiar, um, so what is Faith Life and what is um, Logos Bible Software? Yeah, so uh, the company initially started 30 years ago as Logos Research Systems. Our, our fearless leader and uh, chairman founder, Bob Pritchett, uh, was one of those very smart young people at Microsoft and actually used the labs at Microsoft back in the 90s to create Logos Bible software. And uh, that, that kind of launched the company, uh, obviously left Microsoft and started again logos research systems and then a few years later we changed the company name to logos bible software and then about 10 years ago changed the name of the company again to faith life because we're doing a lot more than just logos now logos is what we're best known for Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got a lot of other technology we've got technology to help churches put you know, song lyrics up on the big screen during the worship service. We've got giving uh, technology. We've, we've got a publish, in-house publishing. So Faith Life was just a better name to encompass all that we do. But again, Logos is what we're best known for. Yeah. So it got questions that our, our goal is to help people to find answers to their Bible questions. And obviously, a big part of that is we want people to be studying the Bible. So um, I've been using... Logos Bible software for probably approaching 20 years. And it's been a huge benefit to me in studying the Bible. So how, and you can describe it, don't get super technical, but how does Logos help people um, understand and study the Bible better? Yeah. So actually I'll borrow from a great, uh, a great experience last week. So I was, uh, off the coast of Miami on one of those little keys, uh, one of the little islands there. I was actually working with about 200 NFL players, hopefully getting them into the Bible, studying the Bible. And there's a feature in logos that, you know, of everything that I showed, I did a, a workshop. I did a morning devotional about the Bible and, you know, we obviously, Uh, We're getting Logos into the hands of these players, but it was the feature in Logos called Factbook that really resonated with so many and kind of the mantra uh, of the event, you know, when it got done was goodbye, Google, hello, Factbook. Mm -hmm. And, and that's been, that's, that was really, you know, it was kind of an epiphany to me. You know, I've been with Logos now 25 years. Uh, I, I've used it personally. I used it in seminary. I think it is absolutely one of the best tools out there to study the Bible. But what I forgot about Logos was it's also very practical, meaning people have questions that need answers. And sadly, most are going to Google for those answers about the Bible, about theology. You know, and I, during one of my sessions, you know, most of the guys were married and, you know, had their wives with them. And I was like, if we just went to Google right now and type the word marriage, you can imagine the nonsense and, and heretical information you'd get, right, about, about marriage. And so, 
Logos is kind of that safe place. It's a curated library of trusted uh, sources and publishers and theologians and so on. And so it was just awesome to see these 300 pound, <laughs> six foot, uh, you know, guys with logos in their hand going to Factbook going, this is exactly what I've been needing because I've been going to Google and I've been getting all kinds of craziness. And so, you know, thank you uh, for providing this tool for us. Yeah. So what are some of the um, key features to Logos? And beyond Factbook, when I look at just the sheer number of resources that are available, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Um, due to our longtime relationship between Got Questions and Faith Life, um, we are gifted whatever the, the biggest package is. I don't know if it's I'm a Marvel Comics fan, so I like to call it um, um, Logo, some Vibranium edition. But um, <laughs> so many resources that way more than I could ever possibly use. And for some people, that can sometimes be a little overwhelming. So what are just some of the ways, in addition to Factbook, where people can use it and not get lost in this, the sheer volume of amazing resources? Yeah, so there's really two things there. There's the tools in Logos, and then there's exactly what you said, the resources. I think we're over 200,000 books now in Logos. And, and the good news there is whatever your interest is, whether it be apologetics, whether it be Christian counseling, whether it, you might be a pastor preparing a message, uh, or you might be absolutely brand new to the Bible. And, and let's be honest, it, it, it can be a daunting and intimidating task uh, to jump into all of those 66 books. So on the feature side, we already mentioned Factbook, but there's another pretty amazing, relatively new feature in Logos called Workflows. Uh, this was another feature last week that really resonated. Uh, and what a workflow is, is a process. So we have a basic Bible study workflow. So let's say someone's new uh, to Christianity, they knew the faith, or knew the Bible. All they have to do is open this feature called the Basic Bible Study Workflow. Type in the verse they want to study: Romans eight, Psalm twenty three, Genesis one, and it just walks you through the seven steps on how to study that particular passage. But the beauty of it is, is not only do we give you the step and we tell you how important. Like number one step is read that passage from your Bible, right? Um, when the step is there, we, we put the Bible right there as, as well. So you don't have to know, where do I go in Logos to accomplish this step? Logos gives you the step and then gives you the information with the step. And then it asks questions. One of the things I love about the workflows is we should be asking questions of the text, like who wrote this? Why did this person write this letter? What were the cultural issues going on? You know, all these things that a a savvy, you know, veteran Bible study student, they know these questions, mm -hmm. but again, someone new doesn't. And so we walk them through these steps. We have a workflow for how to study a biblical person, how to study a doctrine. We even have workflows for devotional reasons or praying the scripture. You know, maybe someone listening, what they really need help with is their time with Jesus in the morning, right? What, it, what, what how can that get better using scripture and so on? So we have a workflow for that. Um, so that's one of the most innovative new features in Logos is this feature called Workflows. Mm -hmm. that's, I think it's very interesting. And in, in my experience with Logos, starting from when I was a baby Christian, I find, found it hugely helpful then and then all through Bible college and seminary studies. So um, just talk a little bit briefly how like the different resources that it would, Logos has for a like a new believer, for like a baby Christian, but also for a more advanced Bible studier. Yeah, so you can actually go to Logos, uh, and, and we're going to have a special promotion for the listeners. So we'll we'll give everybody that special web website. But you can go in and actually pick a denominational lane, if you will. You know, maybe you're more uh, in the Baptist lane, or maybe you're more in the Anglican lane, or uh, you know, we have our just kind of in the middle lane. Um, so you can start kind of where your team is, if you will. Uh, but then again, with 200,000 books, you can add your interest, whether it be again, apologetics or, you know, I want to, I want to master Greek and Hebrew, right? Um, well, you probably want to be at, at the silver level or higher because silver includes those types of resources, right? Your interlinears, 
your, your major Greek and Hebrew lexicons and dictionaries. Or as you said, you could be, I'm brand new. I, you know, that Greek stuff, that's going to be a few years down the road. So you just start at like the starter level or the bronze level. Um, so we have something for just about, you know, anybody listening and where they are in their studies. But the good news is the 200,000 plus additional resources down the road that you can add, you know, as you start developing your ministry and your interests and things like that. Sure. No, like with uh, Scott mentioned it earlier, um, it, it logos.com forward slash got questions podcast. So for, for a week after this podcast airs, logos is offering a 15% discount to anyone who enters, who starts at that URL. So again, we'll include that in the, the show notes at podcast.gotquestions.org and also the description on YouTube when this episode goes live. So thank you, Scott and Logos for offering that to our listeners. Because um, That segue is really easy into the next question I want to ask. And I want to ask you actually two questions because over the years, there's two main issues that people have asked us about it, got questions about why do you guys promote um, Logos Bible software so much. And the first one is why is Logos so expensive? And I always allow you to answer that question. I know how we answer it, but um, how, how do you answer that if someone asks you that question? Yeah, well, you know, solid theological resources cost money. I mean, if you if you go to your Christian bookstore, you know, the, the few that have survived uh, you know, mo- most people are buying resources via the internet now through, you know, through their ministry or, or some of the, the large uh, book sellers. Yeah. Um, you know, theological books are expensive. You know, a commentary right. set, a commentary set can cost you a thousand dollars, you know. The, but if you think about how long it took to write, you know, a 64 volume commentary set and all the scholarship that I mean, it could take 30, 40 years. Um, a single volume of a good, solid biblical commentary can be easily seventy-five to a hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I actually think Logos is the steel of the century. Meaning, let's just say our bronze level—that's kind of our entry level to Bible study. So it includes the major translations, some mm-hmm. good commentaries, good diction. Yeah, it's a couple hundred books. If you do the math on the bronze, uh, you know, even at the discount we're offering, I think you're paying a dollar thirty-five per resource in bronze. I mean, where in the world can you get a a solid Bible dictionary for a buck thirty-five, right? Yeah. So when you realize what you're getting for for the price you're paying. It, it really is an amazing uh, a deal. But I, I, I get it. You know, I was on radio years ago and we had a caller in and he got he was really upset that, you know, Logos had something for one hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. And the, thankfully, the host asked the person that called in, you know, sir, do you have a Bible? And he says, yes, I have a Bible. Uh, you know, what, what Bible do you have? And he, he said the blah, blah, blah study Bible. Well, how much did you pay for that, sir? And he said, well, you know, I, I think it was seventy dollars. And the guy's like, wow. That that actually is the expensive deal right there. I mean, you paid seventy bucks for mm-hmm. a single book. Um, so I get that, but again, if you know the value of books, and if you've ever purchased three, four, five, again, solid theological resources, oh, you're easily at a couple hundred dollars at that point. So Logos is is an amazing deal considering what you get. No, no, I entirely agree with that. And even there are levels below bronze. So you can get a very low entry level um, package that will have all the basic research you need at a very affordable price. But the, for me, the temptation is, oh, wow, I need, like I joked earlier, the vibranium package. I need the package that has absolutely everything. It's like, no, the vast majority of people really don't need that many resources. Because as you mentioned, what, 200,000 books in there? I'm I'm sorry, I'm never going to get around to reading that much, as much as I love to read. So that, that's just an encouragement I get. Don't allow yourself to become, in a sense, like materialistic about it. Don't think, oh, I've got to have a bigger package than my pastor. Or if you're a pastor, then uh, my friend who's another pastor, he's got the platinum edition. It's like, come on, get the package that you think has the resources that will be beneficial to you. And don't get, get into the, I want to have all the bells and whistles and absolutely everything. Um, so the second question, and you mentioned it earlier about the packages for different like denominational lanes. And 
we've received criticism just recently. Why do you promote um, Logos Bible Software when they have a package for Catholics or a package for Seventh Day Adventists? Which we, I fully believe that there are Catholics in Seventh Day Adventists who truly know and love the Lord, but there's a significant number of theological differences between what, generally speaking, is Faith's Life's target audience, which is like evangelical Christian churches. So how do you respond to that? Yeah, well, I respond to it that, you know, I want everybody to grow in their love and their knowledge of the word. And so do I have my theological team? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Um, But what's crazy is where I'm at right now is not where I was 10 years ago. Um, You know, it's not where I came into the faith 20 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're all on a journey. But what I appreciate about the fact that Logos has so many resources from, as you mentioned, other denominational viewpoints is a lot of times I want to understand other viewpoint. I might want to even critique the other viewpoint. Uh, I know when I was in seminary, I loved the fact that I had access to the Anglican view, to the Seventh Day Adventist view. I had, you know, the the Lutheran view. I, 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 it made me actually even more firm in where I stand on some issues. But you know, we can't just stay only in our camp. You know, one of the great things that the Lord—it was a test at the time, but I served in the military for eight years. And I was in back in the early 90s, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, got deployed. And, you know, when when you're in America, you can go to the church you want, hang out with the Christians that, that think about things just the way you do. And, hey, that's great. But when I was over there deployed, if a Catholic told me he loved Jesus, I hung on to that brother for dear life. Uh, <laughs> if I met a Methodist that loved, uh, you know, it was amazing to me how much the differences didn't matter as much because Mm -hmm. we needed each other to get through that. I mean, the temptations, just being away from your family for a couple of years. Um, So it was a really good thing for me to learn uh, in a real world situation. And, And I think it's one of the things I love most about my job at Logos is I teach all over. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I might have been able to see uh, the body of Christ and all of its flavors and all of its colors and all of its, you know, uh, pet peeves and, th- you know, and I've come to appreciate how awesome the body of Christ is. Yeah. So I get it. We get those same phone calls and emails. And mm-hmm. but again, if someone is thinking that listening right now, don't you think that the best thing someone should have that you feel has a heretical view or thinks really wrong about something, wouldn't it be the best thing for them to have is is tools to study the Bible, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. the text itself, to dig into the original languages and original meanings. You know, I think that's what everybody needs, especially those that I disagree with. Yeah, no, and that's exactly how we've responded when we receive the occasional complaint about that. And usually I think it's almost always come with the, the Catholic suite. I mean, look, I, I, there's a lot of stuff in the Catholic package that I have absolutely no interest in, in reading, but if our usual complaint or disagreement with Catholics is about their view of the Bible or they're placing tradition over the Bible, wouldn't we want Catholics to be studying the Bible? And if offering them a package of Bible software with some Catholic resources and it will eventually lead to them restudying the Bible. I think that's a total win. So I, I, I get the concerns, but I also get the the strategy of want, just wanting people to study the Bible, no matter what denomination of branch of Christianity that they're in. So briefly with um, the time we have left, what are some other projects that Faith Life has, has going on? I know you said that Logos Bible Software is by far the, the biggest division of Faith Life, but what What are some of the other um, options or programs that are out there? Yeah, I would say the two major other, I hate even using the word products, technologies that that are really healthy and are really serving the church is one, Proclaim. So Mm -hmm. Proclaim is our, our multimedia software. So it allows the church to put the lyrics up on the big screen uh, you can send questionnaires through Proclaim to mobile devices. I mean, 
Uh, literally, one of the features of Proclaim is, you know, pastor gets up in the pulpit and says, hey, open your Bibles to Romans 8.1. And as soon as he says that, everybody's mobile device vibrates and it says, push here for Romans 8.1. So this amazing uh, connection uh, to ministry and preaching and worship, right, to mobile devices is incredible. Because as you you and I both know, if you look around a church service now and pastor does say, open your Bibles, what is everybody pulling out? They're mobile devices, right? right exactly. Now, I, I'm I'm still old school. I, I still open and, you know, I've got my paper Bible in my hand, but I do have my logos on my iPad right next to it. Yeah. Um, so Proclaim is amazing. And then the, our giving platform is called Faith Life Giving. You know, when, when COVID hit, um, so many churches never thought we would need a giving platform. You know, everybody just puts their check in the box or the offering plate. And uh, yeah, they had to, they had to change uh, that real quickly because so much of it obviously, as you know, is virtual. And so those would probably be the really two big, big technologies that are serving the church outside of Logos Bible software. Yeah. Now our church uses um, Proclaim. And it's it's amazing just how extensive it is, how, how many different things you can do with it. And um, even we just started with just using it for a presentation platform, but then seeing some of the extra features are digging a little deeper into it more and more. So I uh, highly recommend a church who's looking for solutions like this to at least take a look at both um, Proclaim and Faith Life Giving because they're both um, well-designed and at this point, pretty fine-tuned programs. So... So Scott, um, anything else you would like to share about Logos? Who is ultimately um, Logos Bible Software for? You know, I think it's be a great uh, thing to, to close with. There was a recent study, uh, 400,000 uh, Christians were actually part of the study. They wanted to see what Bible engagement looked like for, for the average Joe, right? Uh, and they discovered something that became the highlight of this entire study. Uh, when we're in the Bible, only one time a week, it has negligible effect on some very key areas of our life. Okay, mm -hmm. Two times a week, negligible effect. Three times a week, negligible effect. But when we're in the scripture, at least four times a week, like radical things happen in the life of a believer. And that's not what you would think, right? You'd think it'd be a gradual incline, right? One time a week, two times. No, it was literally one, two, three flat line. But at four times a week, this is what happens. Feeling lonely drops 30%. Anger issues drop 32%. Bitterness in relationships, especially marriage, drops 40%. Sexual sins, such as pornography, drops 60%. And then the big stat was feeling distant from God. You know, when I travel and I get to talk to people, I hear from so many people, I feel really distant from the Lord. You know what's the first thing I ask? What does what your week look like in the Bible? I, and I know what the answer is going to be. I know what the answer is going to be. That dropped 62% when we're in the Word of God at least four times a week. So there's this like massive study with a lot of smart people looking at the data that that is saying what we already know. We have to be in the Word of God on a regular basis. You know, and on the flip side, sharing your faith jumps 200% and discipling others, your coworkers, your family, uh, you know, those that you're in leadership over, that jumps 230%. So that's why we get up in the morning at Logos. That's what we're excited about. I mean, 500 employees now dedicated to creating tools to make the Bible you know, come to life on your screen. I mean, one of the things you and I love about Logos is how we visualize things like the Psalms Explorer. And I mean, it's just like your eyeballs are like, wow, I have never seen the Bible like this before. But wouldn't it be the greatest thing for somebody that gets Logos and then a couple days down the road, they look up at the clock and it's three o'clock in the morning and they're still studying the Bible. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this, what is this? This is incredible. That's what excites me about Logos. Yeah. So again, it got questions that are our, our goal is to help people find answers to their Bible questions, whether that's at gotquestions.org or through other means that we want people in the word. We want people studying the Bible and Logos is a tremendous resource. I mean, it's, it's amazing how many different resources are, are available to help you understand the Bible better, to help you study topically, to help you under, dig really deep into a specific passage. There's so many great tools. So Scott, thank you for coming on the show today and um, sharing a little bit about what Logos, Logos is and what Faith Life is all about. 
I appreciate your time today. And remember, we got the the website up uh, for about a week after this airing, and um, and also the we have a monthly option, so uh, we'll we'll help you kind of budget it out. Um, so and free training. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, this sounds interesting, but uh, you, you don't know me and my computer. We don't get along too well. Yeah. We will train you. So we have a free training website that'll teach you how to use any aspect or tool inside of Logos. So we want you doing more and better Bible study. And so we will support you in that, in those ends. Awesome. And again, that link is um, logos.com forward slash got questions podcast. And of course we'll include the links when this episode goes live. So Scott, thank you again. This is the got questions podcast, got questions, Bible has answers. And we'll be fine.